Okay, this video is called The Cure for Atheism. So what is this about? Um, I've noticed that anytime I ever say anything pro-religious, not anytime, but several times, uh, I get sort of hassled by atheists, and it's kind of strange. Um, you know, there's, there's a difference between somebody who is trying to understand what do they believe. That's a normal thing that everybody goes through. I'm not talking about that. That's a normal thing, and lots of very nice people have all kinds of questions. That's normal, okay? But there's, there's another group of sort of like these aggressive atheist people on the Internet that feel if you don't agree with them, they sort of call you stupid or something. And I'm like, and yeah, I love the way they tell me I don't know anything about evolution. I majored in evolution at Stanford University. I was an A student, won tons of academic awards. Okay, I studied a lot of biology and medicine, first in my class in med school. Okay, I, I just say all that because... The first thing that happens, they say you're stupid. If you don't believe everything that they believe about evolution, you're stupid. And most of them haven't even studied uh, biology or evolution. They just, it's their religion. And basically, you they want you to believe their religion. Think of atheism having Darwinism as a creation story. Okay, so by the way, Darwinism has nothing to do with the origin of life. They're two totally different things. Even Francis Crick, co-discoverer of the structure of DNA, had said it seems as if a miracle that life on Earth occurred, as if it was seeded from another uh, planet. That's the panspermia theory. Okay, nobody really knows what happened, and the thing that makes the most sense is God. After I can tell you that after studying it in great detail for years, okay? Now, here's some books that if anybody wants to start to address these questions, the best starter book would be Is Atheism Dead by Eric Metaxas. It was written in 2021. He's a very good writer. And you don't have to buy any of these books. Just go on the Internet and you'll find videos on almost every single one of these books. So you can just real quick get to the information if you want. This guy, Michael Guillon, is a Ph.D. He was a physicist at Harvard. And what is sometimes good about this book, if somebody wants mathematical arguments, he goes through all the quantum mechanics, um, anything you could want from a logical mathematical point of view, he'll go through it. So his book's a little different than the others because some people think, oh, logic is so strong. And he goes through Gödel's theorems, you know, like from 1931 on that basically even just the mathematical system for arithmetic is based on faith. You have to accept a whole bunch of assumptions before you can even begin to do arithmetic, yet alone more sophisticated mathematics. And science will sort of tell you what something is. It's, it's good for deciding this is what this is. It is made out of copper and aluminum and whatever. It's not good at saying, you know, why answering metaphysical questions. Why are we here on earth? What is the meaning of our life? What is the purpose of our life? What should be our relationship to God? There's never going to be logical proofs for metaphysics, okay? But those are some of the most important questions we can ask ourselves. What do I want to do with my life, my time on earth? What's most important? What should I value? Okay, so anyways, um, Return to the God Hypothesis, another good recent book. Steve Meyer, super smart guy, and he's written a bunch of stuff. He also wrote Darwin's Doubt down here somewhere about evolution. Um, Miracle of the Cell by Michael Denton and Cells Design by Fazal Rana. Those are nice books. I've read every single book on this list and, and tons more. Um, they're about the biochemistry. Biochemistry is so incredibly complicated. Like I said, I was very enthusiastic to learn it when I was younger because it's like the language of God, which you use to create the book of life. It's so incredibly uh, complicated and ingenious. It's just brilliant. It's just orders and orders and orders and orders of magnitude beyond anything humans can do. When you read like the biochemistry of pharmacology compared to the biochemistry of cell, it's a joke, okay? It is so simple-minded, it's not even funny. It's like throwing rocks at uh, a Michelangelo. It's like in, even beyond that, the difference, okay? So here's a good quote I want you to hear from Alexander Solzhenitsyn. He was the uh, Russian guy. He was the author of this book down here, Gulag Archipelago. And what he basically said was, you know, to just if he was asked to summarize the main cause of Russia's destruction that killed over 65 million Russian citizens by its own um, uh, rulers, he said, I would say it was because men have forgotten God. That is why all this happened. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Um, atheism, he said, is what makes everything possible in, in communism and the destruction of the Russian people. Because basically you totally are dehumanized. Once you go from the concept of like a biblical God, humans are created in the image of God, to the idea of there is no God, then you're just in the category of a Darwinian category of a talking primate. A talking primate has no rights. A chimpanzee is in a cage at the zoo. Same thing with gorillas, okay? Zero rights. Um, and that opens the door for communism, for Gulag Archipelago. As uh, Dostoevsky had said in his magnificent book, Brothers Karamazov, 
in the Grand Inquisitor chapter, uh, basically, if there is no God, then everything is permitted, you, even cannibalism. Why not? We feed cows to other cows. Why not feed humans to other humans? It would help feed the poor. And morally, that's repugnant, and that's because you still have some morals, okay? And you want those morals because they, they provide a lot of other benefits to the quality of human life on this planet. But once you say we're just a talking primate, a talking monkey, all rights, all natural rights, all that's out the door. Forget about it, okay? And we're not like other animals. Um, some good books on that are Kingdom of Speech by Thomas Wolfe. There's, you know, our brain's more than three times as big as a chimp, and none of the other animals has a verbal language like us. Uh, okay, what other, some of the other books here? Evolution 2.0 by Perry Marshall. It's a good starter book for evolution, okay? Um, these books here are written by, you know, evolutionary Darwinian biologists. Douglas Axe about, you know, the miracle of protein complexity, how this couldn't have happened by accident. Um, um, these other books, too, go through the astronomy fine-tuning arguments. These are the biology, biochemistry fine-tuning arguments. This is another um, biology, biochemistry fine-tuning arguments of Michael Behe on the flagella and all that stuff, the immune system, the clotting system, etc. cetera. Um, the, what mutations actually do, how they're almost always very destructive. Uh, Dance to the Tune of Life is another evolutionary biologist writing about how uh, evolutionary theory in terms of Darwinian theory, neo-Darwinian theory, it just doesn't work, okay? And it, you can even look at the Lynn Margulis theory, it doesn't work with her stuff. You can look at, you know, how wrong Sagan was, you know, Carl Sagan on just one thing after another. He didn't know what he's talking about. Uh, Devil's Delusion by Berlinski, interesting book. Um, Coulter, she's a genius and her book's very funny and hits the key points. You know, she's so smart she could write about evolution or biology, even though that's obviously not her field. Case for a Creator by Lee Strobel. He's, he's very good, very entertaining, and real easy for anyone to read who wants to just sort of be introduced to these topics and not read about the more advanced stuff. Um, Healing Power of Faith is just another reminder. The religious populations, they're way healthier. Um, you know, that's another thing, too. Religion sort of makes the average person happier. It adds more meaning to their life. Um, and like Nietzsche said, he hated Christianity. He says it's a religion of poor people, of losers, of slaves. He wanted a power religion for his people. You know, there's a reason why poor people, slaves, and regular people like a religion that says that their life has meaning, okay? Because it makes them happier. It, it, it provides some positive benefits to their life. Um, the Book That Made Your World by Vishal Mangawati. Also, For the Glory of God by Rodney Stark. What these books are all about was it shows that it was the religious populations that started science. They're the only population that really developed significant science. The so-called enlightenment was actually due to the Christians who started all the science, and historically that's correct. A lot of what's taught to kids in grade school and high school is simply not true. They knew the world was round long before Christopher Columbus. There's all kinds of things like that. And the so-called enlightenment was just an attempt by persons like the philosophes like Voltaire to deny what had actually really happened. He praised uh, Newton. Newton was like the most religious person you could find. He wrote millions of words about his religious theories. He was obsessed with religion. Okay, same with the greatest uh, composer, Bach. Um, with the greatest sculptor, Michelangelo, and lots of the other greatest scientists and artists and creative people that ever lived. Okay, so that's another thing, too. I try to call people stupid. Look, it's the geniuses that are the most religious. Um, not always, but most of the time. Okay, uh, other books here. Well, that's pretty much all the books. So anyways, if anybody's interested, here's what you can read. If anybody tries to call you stupid for believing in God, you can give them this. And also realize... Once atheism is mainstream, if it ever becomes mainstream, and it looks like it's making progress, your rights are out the window. And what happened to Russia, you know, 100 years ago could happen here too. So hopefully it won't.